There's a storm coming. You sound like you're looking forward to it. I'm adaptable. What are you? I'm Gotham's reckoning. What we're constructing here is a very, very elemental conflict between good and evil. Why didn't you just kill me? Your punishment must be more severe. Did they kill him? I'm not sure. It's the true completion. I won't bury you. Buried enough members of the Wayne family. It takes everything to a whole new level. We were in this together. And then you are gone. It's a multi-layered story with massive amounts of action. The Batman has to come back. Chris was able to amp up the stakes for this last movie and really take it to places that I don't think anyone's expecting. What if it doesn't exist anymore? She must. At the beginning of The Dark Knight Rises, we find a Bruce Wayne who's been damaged by his experiences as Batman. You are as precious to me as you were to your own mother and father. I swore to them that I would protect you, and I haven't. How much longer can he allow this pain to control what he does with his life? Alfred feels that it's his duty to help him find a way to put it behind him. You're not Batman anymore. It's about eight years that Batman has been missing and we've gotten to see what Gotham has become. Everything seems fine on the surface, but it's all built on this lie. I am the main sort of facilitator of that. It's a secret, I, I, I think, that's eaten away at him. So The Dark Knight Rises is about how that affects Gotham and how things begin to get worse once again. And now is Bruce having to deal with a, a new threat to the city and to himself? The choice has to be made. Is Batman going to return? It's the true test of a hero. Confronted with their darkest fears, being taken all the way to the edge. How do they come back? Do you think he's coming back? I don't know. In The Dark Knight Rises, we have an incredible ensemble that we've put together. I remember seeing Christian in the makeup chair. There's a three-year-old in me that's like, that's, that's Batman. <laughs> it never stops giving me goosebumps, standing in the, in the suit, you know, where you walk down the steps and everyone just stops. I really wanted to see Batman meet his match. There's a new kid in town. <laughs> this is the first time that Batman has come across anybody who is superior physically. Mr. Wayne. Wayne's not ready to be reasoned with. When Gotham is ashes, you have my permission to die. Some people want to watch the world burn. Well, Bane's come to pull the pin on the grenade. Tom Hardy is an extraordinary actor. What Tom is able to do just with his expressions and his eyes, it's terrifying. Through the course of The Dark Knight Rises, we'll uncover more about what drives Bane, where he comes from, what he wants. Let the games begin. And none of it's good news. He made some mistakes. It's Kyle. Girl's gotta eat. Selena Kyle has her own code of ethics, which sometimes involves doing things that other people might consider questionable. We have to have a way of grounding the character. Realizing that the Catwoman could just be this calm woman, this grifter, this classic movie femme fatale, really. It's a brazen costume for a cat burglar. Yeah? Who are you pretending to be? I think Anne understood right from the first that she was going to have to do almost everything in the film herself. She has to be that character. She took it on in the most extraordinary way. The most important thing is to fit into Chris's Gotham City. My Catwoman has to be Chris Nolan's Catwoman. Don't be shy. When you cleaned up the streets, you cleaned them good. Pretty soon, we'll be chasing down overdue library books. My character, John Blake, is a proud police officer. And in the midst of, I think, a lot of cynicism, 
he remains really idealistic and someone who really believes in what he does. We have a new character played by Marion Cotillard, Miranda Tate, a member of the Wayne Enterprises board, and she's trying to pull him out of his shell and get him back into the world. Don't worry, Master Wayne. It takes a little time to get back into some of the things. Alfred, as played by Michael Caine, has always been the emotional heart of these movies. You know what Alfred is? He is us in this incredible world. He's not tough like all the others. These conversations used to end with an unusual request. I'm retired. I would say Lucius is the brains. Yes, Mr. Wayne, it does come in black. But he also has grown to have a great fondness for Bruce. Lucius and Alfred. Between the two of them, we try to keep his moral compass pointed in the right direction. And Commissioner Gordon, to some extent, has been left on his own running the, the police in Gotham. Jim Gordon really is the conscience of Batman, isn't he? What's great with, with Batman's allies is that they really bring interesting questions that Bruce has to answer in his life. Chris has always had such a strong sense of spectacle with this good human story to it as well. He turns those big action movies into something very intimate and emotional. You feel very close to all those people. In every movie that Chris has made on the Dark Knight trilogy, he's been able to keep to great filmmaking in terms of the great characters and the great character arts. He creates whole worlds that you really can get lost in. What does that mean? Rise. The Dark Knight Rises is certainly the biggest film that I've undertaken by far. We really looked back to the silent era of motion pictures. When the image was paramount, when all you had was the scope and scale of the location, thousands of extras, that kind of thing. That's the kind of storytelling I was interested in exploring. Dark Knight Rises is about trying to get some of that romantic scale and modernism into it in a sort of uh, epic way. We started the shoot in India, then we moved to the UK. After that, we went to Pittsburgh, Los Angeles, Manhattan. It's been relentless action from start to finish. We've expanded into the largest of genres, the war movie, the disaster film. They add scale, raising the stakes from a place where they were already extremely heightened. We do get a great kick out of doing this action work. be in Inverness, Scotland, flying with a fuselage in an aircraft and four stuntmen hanging off an airplane. With Chris Nolan, as much as we can physically do inside of that lens is where he would like to go. We had them on the outside of the aircraft, shooting through the windows, and it was a big thing to come together. He has this wow factor. We're back at Carlington, which is this large hangar. You OK? Yep. A lot of the film takes place underground, so we've built a Gotham sewer system and we're pumping an enormous amount of water around it. We wanted to fulfill the promise of Batman Begins, which is that Wayne Manor will be rebuilt exactly as it was, but that the Batcave will be expanded and brought forward technologically. My mother warned me about getting into cars with strange men. This isn't a car. One of the biggest creations was the new flying vehicle. The bat. It's a big insect. It's nearly 30 foot long and 17 foot wide. It needs to travel very fast up roads. It needs to climb up over buildings. Chris Corbold and Chris's designs are just phenomenal. It's a wonderful new gadget. We have a big stadium that we have to blow up. The Pittsburgh Steelers have kindly allowed us their stadium. 
We had almost 11,000 people turn up for one day's shooting to play fans of the, the Gotham Rogues. The biggest challenge is just the sheer scale of the operation that's going on. You know, we've got thousands of people in the stands, we've got multiple cameras, IMAX cameras. This is probably going to be one of the biggest, most demanding visual effects sequences in the film. We needed to up the scale of the city, and there's only one place that you can do that, and that's New York. In the Wall Street sequence, there's a big battle between the, the police and all the mercenaries. They've got something like 1,200 extras. Chris really did want to shoot everything as real as possible, so there's no visual effects enhancing the amount of people that are in that scene. This was uh, eight months of preparation has gone into what you see here, working with the city, with the departments, in order to control this set. Seeing that many bodies in the middle of Wall Street fighting each other, even if it was controlled chaos, it's, it's still kind of like, wow. People of Gotham, we have not abandoned you. What does that mean? It means we're on our own. This is certainly the biggest movie that I've ever worked on. But then emotionally, it feels like something that a lot of people can tap into. It's wonderful. It kind of brings things uh, full circle. You see only one end to your journey. Sometimes, a man rises from the darkness. Every great story deserves a great ending, and we've really tried to be true to that. The Dark Knight Rises is our attempt to give that great story its great ending. We want to destroy Gossip. What now? You don't owe these people anymore. You've given them everything.